to another ASMR video here on the channel. Now, today I've gone for a bit more of a spooky look. Well, I'm now looking into the viewfinder. Is it really spooky? I don't know. Probably not. But anyways, we're rocking with it. Anyways, the reason for that is in a few days' time it is, of course, Halloween. some good jump scare moments in there as well. Um. 
and the ending, oh my god, the ending of Insidious 1 is like, I think, I think I went to go and watch it at the cinema, and uh, I was, I was terrified, and then number two sort of picks up, it, in, like, almost immediately where number one went off, so you kind of have to watch them together, so that's an idea, watch Insidious 1 and 2 back to back this weekend, because why not, but yeah, for me, it's probably up there as being one of my favourite horror movies, just because the suspense in it is crazy, and it is so scary, and it's got a great cast, Patrick, what's his name? Oh wow, well, so, such a great cast, I can't even remember his name, and Rose Byrne is the bloke out of The Conjuring, um, yeah, it's got a really good cast, uh, so yeah, Insidious 1 and 2 first on my list, next on my list, well, I mentioned The Conjuring, we may as well talk about that, I've got written down The Conjuring 1, now I've, I've also put 2 in brackets, um, again, when The Conjuring came out, there was so much hype about it, and there was like stories of people having to be taken out of cinemas, like fainting and stuff, I'm not really sure what, absolute wimps, no, it is of course a scary film, but I didn't think it was as bad as people, as people said, there is a moment without, I don't want to spoil it, but there's a scene where a certain someone is on top of the wardrobe and it like pans up, that, that got me, um, but let me just read you the summary in 1970, paranormal investigators and demonologists Lorraine and Ed Warren, Patrick Wilson and Vera Farmiga uh, are summoned to the home of Carolyn and Roger Perrin. The Perrins and their five daughters have recently moved into a secluded farmhouse where a supernatural presence has made itself known. Though the manifestations are relatively benign at first, events soon escalate in horrifying fashion, especially after the Warrens discover the house's horrifying history. So yeah, and then in number two, it's set, it's like a different story, but still, uh, The Warrens, uh, and it's set in the UK, and it's all about a poltergeist, well, among other things as well, and I mean, that one really sets up the Conjuring universe, and which is now a thing, I haven't seen Conjuring 3, Devil Made Me Do It, uh, I do really want to though, but the reason I wasn't so quick to go and watch it was because The Nun was absolutely awful, like, so promising. The Nun, I think, from Conjuring, is it Conjuring 2 or Conjuring 1? No, Conjuring 1. I know both, it's in both. It was such, like, a horrifying character, and I think they just wasted it. They need to do another one where Falak, the Nun, is in it, because I really think... It was a waste, a big waste. But yeah, The Conjuring 1 especially is really, really good. And while you're at it, you may as well watch number 2. 2 is certainly not as good, not as strong, nor not as scary. Nowhere near as scary. But uh, yeah, both of them are definitely worth a watch. Now I'm going to mix things up a bit with my next one. Uh, rather than just starting with all the, like, the mainstream ones, I'm going to throw one in my genuinely scary one. Now, it's Signs. Now, many of you may be familiar with this film. It is an alien movie, and it's not a conventional horror film. But, boy, when I, when I watched this for the first time, I was terrified. But it still gives me chills when I watch it. The, it's directed by M. Night Shyamalan, and, uh, Mel Gibson is in it, along with Joaquin Phoenix, I blanked for a moment there, and the performances are just absolutely incredible, that's what really sells it, the, the family dynamic is so believable, and while it is kind of about alien invasion, it's like, not to be cringe, but it's, it's about so much more than just that, but uh, it's a really brin brilliantly put together film, the suspense is incredible, and there are a few, like, jump scares, but it's not jump scares with the ridiculous, like, inception, boom, like, they're jump scares, because, well, that was, like, it was, like, 
genuinely scary, so if you don't want like a super, if you don't want like a demonic, like typical horror movie, but you want to be sort of scared and put on the edge of your seat, definitely watch Signs, it's, it's probably one of my, it probably makes my top, oh, I did a top ten, it didn't make it, but it gets close, because it's, uh, it's a really, really great movie, so yeah, that's just to mix things up a bit, if you're not a big, de- I was going to say a big demon fan, I'm pretty sure no one's a, <laughs> no one's a big demon fan, but you know what I mean, in terms of films and that, so, yeah, definitely, definitely recommend Signs. Now, uh, moving on, we're going to stay away from the demons as well, and this is mixing things up a little bit, I've got down train to Busan, um, now, a lot of people have been watching Squid Games on Netflix. I've I'm very late to the party. I've only just watched the second episode, and obviously that is a Korean show. So hopefully, um, a lot of people have a vested interest in Korean films. I know Parasite did really well at the Oscars, but Train to Busan is an amazing Korean zombie horror film, and like these zombies are probably the most terrifying iterations of zombies in like cinema history they are so fast they're like borderline impossible to kill they do have a weakness in that when they can't see you they they don't move but they are they're like the world war z zombies basically it's absolutely crazy and i mean before i watched parasite i was skeptical because I sort of think I I was of the of the notion. How can you get properly invested in a story when you have to read the subtitles? But honestly, I can't really describe it. If you've watched Squid Games, you probably know. You, you just kind of forget that you're doing it, and you kind of don't even realise they're speaking Korean. It's it's kind of crazy. But I think it's just because the acting is that good, and there is one character from Squid Games. The actor I can't remember his name is the main character in Train to Busan, but uh, essentially there is a, a zombie, zombie apocalypse, zombie outbreak, epidemic, whatever you want to call it, and the idea is that there's all these passengers on this train going to Busan where apparently there is like a safe haven, and the relationships between the characters, you're really rooting for certain characters, and um, it's just it's just brilliant, you should definitely watch it gory all that good stuff but really really good story as well so that's train to busan really good film very good film i kind of want to watch it now i'm speaking about it right we'll go back to some more typical more typical horror films next on my list i've got sinister now little story about this film me and my friend watched it the year it came out uh, out of the cinema, like onto Sky or whatever, we watched it in the broad daylight during the day, and this still scared, like, everything out of me, like, I was a shell of a human after watching this, the jump scares in this, just, like, my soul left my body about ten different times, and just, like, the whole notion of it is just so, so creepy, Sinister 2 is, like, kind of, uh, not kind of, it's terrible, like, it, it just doesn't, feel the same since the one the the setting this house which for some reason they they never think to just turn some lights on which is always the case in horror films i know it's not real but like just turn a lamp on you losers like do you know what i mean but uh yeah basically this family move into this house and i believe murders and stuff that like really happened and he doesn't tell his family that they're moving into like this murder house and then he finds a load of tapes in the attic and these tapes essentially depict kids killing their parents and families in horrific ways that's not a spoiler because that was all in the trailer and yeah it basically just follows this story of this demon called Bagul who is kind of goofy looking, but is pretty, pretty scary, but, uh, yeah, the jump scares in this are ridiculous, and 
the setting is really cool. But yeah, I would say this is probably still to this day the scariest film I've watched. Just like it, it really impacted me. I feel like this is a bit like therapy. I've gone for the, like I said, I've gone for like an ambient, like green, spooky setting. But I'm just waffling like an absolute loo, like I'm a, a crazy person. But anyways, moving on. Down, Get Out, obviously a very well-known film, I'm sure many of you have seen it, Daniel Kaluuya with one of the great performances of, of recent times, and uh, yeah, again, no demons and stuff in this one, but I feel like I keep saying suspense, but like the suspense in this is crazy, and it's kind of... Uh, they were very clever with the marketing for this movie in that they didn't really give away the plot at all. You could kind of guess with certain things, but it, I, coming into it, I did not expect it to go the way that it did. Obviously, I'm not going to tell you that. Go and watch it for yourself. But yeah, Get Out, a, a really, really great horror movie. Um, not super, super, super scary. It's more creepy than scary, I would say. And uh, yeah, really great plot. So, um, if you're not a fan of demons, Get Out might just be for you. Yeah, and what else have I got left? I have two left on my list, but genuinely scary, and I believe they're made by the same director, or like company, maybe. Anyways, we'll begin with the less scary one, Midsummer. Uh, Midsummer is about a. I'm trying to remember what I can and can't say, but it's about a group of young, young students, young, young guys, who essentially, their, their friend has the idea of going to, I think it's Sweden, right, and spending their summer out there to like clear their heads and travel, and one of them's writing a dissertation and stuff, and basically, they go and stay with this group who live in the middle of nowhere, no technology, no nothing. And uh, basically, it follows how that goes down. Obviously, a horror film doesn't go too well, and they sort of turn out to be a cult. But there's just oh, there's so many layers to it. I can't even begin to I explain to you. But the the visual, the visuals and setting in this is just off the like off the charts. Like the set design and costumes, everything, and even like the choreography of how the villages and stuff interact with one another and in the backgrounds and everything like it's one of those ones you have to go back and watch a couple of times and you'll notice more creepy things and more signs that things aren't what they seem kind of thing so yeah Midsommar really really great movie Florence Pugh love Florence Pugh uh, she's brilliant in it and it's obviously got a lot of other good actors like Will Bolter and then linked to this well they're not linked to the not in a cinematic universe but like I said made by the same people we've got Hereditary now I've watched this film twice the first time I watched it I didn't really appreciate it because my brother was having my brother was having an 18th house party and I was meant to be like chaperoning it or whatever like looking out for people to not get too drunk so I was sort of dipping in and out of it so I didn't really fully appreciate it so I went back and watched it a second time. This is possibly the best acted horror movie I have ever seen. Uh, how is her name? Tony Collette. How she didn't win an Oscar for this performance, I have absolutely no idea because she was incredible as the mum dealing with grief and just all these things. And again, it's, it's sort of one of those films where for a lot of it, you don't really know where it's going, whether it's demonic and sorts of things but uh yeah brilliantly acted super creepy it is very scary quite gory actually as well in parts so uh, if you're not a fan of gore maybe this isn't the one for you or just look away and uh, me gore doesn't really bother me too much like i know it's not real so like who cares but yeah hereditary a really really good scary film definitely go check that one out as well and now I'm going to just rattle through my list of uh, meant to be scary, but 
remember just to laugh, but I've realised I've put some films in here which uh, aren't aren't really meant to be scary, but they're just a lot of fun. So uh, ones that are meant to be scary, the paranormal activity films. If you find these films scary, um, um, I don't I don't really know what to say because they're not. It it just flickers from room to bomb number one. It's one camera in one room. It is so boring. Like, honestly, just watch the last five minutes of that one. Uh, the second one is my personal favourite because they put cameras in multiple rooms and capture more stuff. Um, the third one, honestly, I can't remember. They kind of went a bit stupid. Like, I can't remember what the third one was. I think it was the one with the blonde girl. The fourth one, I think, was the marked ones and then there was a five which I think was ghost dimension which was just stupid marked ones was actually really fun because it sort of stepped out of the main story because they are sort of all linked um, and it was sort of like focused on, focused on like a Hispanic community and yeah it was actually really cool I thoroughly enjoyed that one so two and four I think are my favourites but they're on my list just because ultimately they're pretty garbage, but they are a whole lot of fun, and if you're looking for a, a massive movie marathon this Halloween, I'd just watch all five Paranormal Activities. Is there six? I don't think there's six. I think, honestly, they'd given up, like, even making five, they were like, oh, who cares anymore? Um, yeah, some good moments in all of them, but most of the time they just crawl, they're so slow-paced, but... Fun. Fun to binge. If you, if you want a massive marathon this, uh, this Halloween. Next on my list, I've got It and It 2. Obviously, still a horror movie. I don't find clowns scary and all the things that Pennywise morphs into. Not I don't find super scary, but again, both parts brilliantly acted. If I had to choose a favourite, I think I'd have to say number two. It's tricky actually. The thing is, I found like with number one, I just find with things like that now, they're just trying to use like the, the sort of stranger, th stranger things the formula, if you know what I mean. And that's not to say that like people can't ever make like 70s, 80s, like films set in the 70s, 80s with kids in. But I just feel, yeah, it just had that kind of vibe to it, whereas do. Yeah, I think I did prefer to a lot more, and uh, yeah, they are, they're great films. I've never actually watched the original It, so maybe I should do that. Let me know if you've seen it with uh, Tim Curry, um, because I never have. <laughs> Next on my list, linked to The Conjuring, I have Annabelle, and that's number one, but also the ones they've they've now made um, again they're just absolute garbage some scary moments yes jump scares plenty but ultimately like it, it's a it's a floating doll it's a doll like the, a, a demon carries around first of all what what scary demon keeps a doll like you you freak um, but yeah like some people might find them scary. Again, this is my personal opinion. I just think watching those films, I was like, this is totally ridiculous. Um, story pretty weak, but uh, maybe I'm being too harsh because they do all have some scary moments, of course. I'd, I'd hope so, being a horror film, but yeah, Annabelle, not for me, but maybe for somebody else. Uh, I've got written down here Cabin in the Woods. Cabin in the Woods, one of my favourite movies. Still technically in the horror genre, but uh, I don't want to spoil it if you haven't seen it, but definitely watch this film. It's it's really funny, like it's like a horror comedy, a self-aware horror comedy is how I would, I would uh, describe it, but not self-aware and that is stupid, like it still takes itself seriously enough kind of thing, but uh, yeah, it basically sort of, not challenges, but like explores all the typical horror movie tropes, um, like the dumb blonde and stupid decisions that the characters make and the potential reasons for that, and then it 
has its own story as well. That's as far as a, I can explain it without ruining it completely, but definitely watch it. It's got Chris Hemsworth in it, so why not? And uh, the last one I have in this category is Misery. Now, Misery, not demonic, not ghosts, not zombies, not anything. Literally just a story about a man who is a writer whose car goes off the side of the road and he is taken in by this woman who lives on her own in a desolate cabin and she turns out to be his number one fan which upon first hearing you'd think great number one fan how lucky can you get well it turns out she's too much of a super fan and things just get creepy and downright scary and, and a little bit violent this film will will wrap you on the edge of your seat I'm like a trailer narrator but uh, it's quite an old film uh, is it Kathy Bates I think plays the fan if that's her name she's in the office as well but uh, brilliant actress and uh, definitely recommend it it's, it's a Stephen King based on the Stephen King novel the book's really good as well but yeah that is called Misery and finally we move on to the final group the group of films that have their own category the scary movie films now if you don't know these films they are the most <laughs> ridiculous comedy films that basically rip into every horror movie ever and they still have their own sort of story but like they're just totally ridiculous but they're so so funny but I'm gonna come clean with a little story here when I was in year, I think it was year six or year seven, we'll call it year six just because I know where the story's going. I went to a sleepover and basically we watched Scary Movie 3. And, uh, you know, super, super funny film. I've watched it many times since. I can laugh at it. But at the time, for some reason, it uh, I, I could have been watching Saw or something. But there were a few jump scares in there, and as a as a eleven year old boy, it it got me. It basically took the mick out of the ring, you know, where the girl crawls out of the deli. And uh, yeah, I basically we watched that. We went to sleep. I didn't sleep. I started crying and called out for one of my friends to turn the light on. Uh, to which, obviously, my tears were revealed to the the three other my best friends in the room and uh, yeah I didn't really live that down for a little bit but now looking back I'm like you, you idiot but uh, yeah funny story so it does have like some jump scares and stuff but they're all super super funny films like I think one takes to make out a scream two takes to make out a haunted mansion haunted house or whatever three takes to make out of the ring four is the grudge and five is paranormal activity and they're all funny they're all super stupid so if you want to watch a horror movie which isn't scary in the slightest and will just make you laugh rather than cry then definitely check out the scary movie franchise because they're an absolute laugh but yeah guys that does bring us to the end of this video i hope i gave you some good video ideas for this halloween I like, I felt like it was a bit, well it was definitely very, very rambly, uh, obviously I wrote down a few notes but nothing crazy so I hope it wasn't too erratic and you managed to find it both relaxing and entertaining. But anyways guys, that is going to do it for this video, if you did enjoy, please do like it if you are able, subscribe.